missed the last meeting to yeah surgery. I'm sorry, <laughs> for good reason. I I Everyone's got excuses now. New baby surgery. What was your excuse? If you'd have been here for the special meeting and the reorganization of the board, you would know. All right, well, I'll call this. <laughs> Approval of minutes. I looked through them. Yeah, you missed the last several meetings. <laughs> they're good to go. I hope they're paying you well. I know, right? You want to make a motion to approve the minutes? I will make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Approval of expenditures. Make a motion to approve payroll in $105,224.93, funds in $20,586.40, and activity account for $12,421.12. Is, is this where I'd ask a question? Yeah. yeah. Right here, right now. Okay. Um, I, can't, I haven't found it, but when I saw it on my phone, it was a question <laughs> about. Um, the second semester uh, transportation reimbursements. Yes. That's on so page one of the contract. We have <laughs> right here on the bottom. We have three families that live beyond the school, and we pay them to thirty-five cents a mile um, to drive their kiddos to school and back in lieu of having bus. Okay. Okay. So. Um, what is the, is, is it that they're supposed to be three miles further? Three so miles you've got to be at least three miles away from the school. What happens, say somebody's 10 miles from the school. Okay. Um, when we go to do the reimbursement, we subtract those three miles. So they would only get reimbursed for seven miles here and seven miles back. And that's at a rate of 35 cents per mile. So whatever 14 miles times 35 cents, that would be their daily rate. So every day, I check with Mariah to see what their attendance was, if they missed Days, that sort of thing, and then I calculate um, for first semester in February, second semester in June, and they get reimbursed twice a year. Jeez, that's cheap. That's what the law says. That's what we're doing. I charge five dollars. <laughs> so be more accurate. Right? <laughs> right? Seriously. That's why I charge. Them. That's what's in the invoice on the head to Utah. <laughs> five bucks a mile. So then. I could see on there, which I'm not seeing here, who those were. Uh, so Danica's one of them. And okay. then we have Dustin Hoon. Okay. And then we have Tessa. Okay, and then I thought I saw Jill Wilson. Does she get mileage? She gets too? mileage for running. So like when she does stuff at the school, when she goes to Costco or to trainings, or what she did is she put in a full year's worth of mileage okay. for an end of year reimbursement. That's typically what she does every year. Yeah. So did those look right to you guys here? Yep. Okay. So, 
through second grade to uh, Fort Missoula and Turner Farms and they had brand new baby goats at um, Turner Farms. I can show you my photo op. <laughs> if you haven't seen it already. <laughs> they were very cute and the goats are definitely ahead. Um, so that and it worked out. That was a beautiful day. Um, and we had to change our Lake Como trip uh, because of weather and we walked out started thundering and raining down there at, right after we left. Uh, field day we had on the 29th, uh, we did get some rain for that. <laughs> uh, we had eighth grade graduation and kindergarten promotion and we had an end of the year assembly. And on the 21st I had DNRC come out and actually kind of do a walk around with me around the property and make some recommendations fire safe. Um, so there was so several little things. Um, a few trees they recommended cutting down. Um, we've already worked removing some of the brush. The landscaping company's done that. Weed whacking and removing things um, to make sure that um, we knock some of that down before fire season. So they had some good recommendations. Besides removing a couple trees and whatnot, most of them are pretty small. Also had some contractors out to get bids, but I'll talk about that um, in the agenda item. And moving on to the summer school week, and then we'll have a week of working with um, different folks and paperwork. Mrs. Cruz and I will be uh, working the week of the 10th, and then the 17th through the 20th, um, myself, Mrs. Bishop, and um, Ms. Gruba were going to the We are running the bus for the program as well. Um, so when we wrote that ELO grant using COVID money, we also put a grant in for summer, but separate from the after school program for the school year. And so that's what we're using to pay for this for the salaries, as well as the busing, the food, the supplies. This is all grant funded uh, through COVID uh, as their ELO. Um, so we would not be able to do this the way it is and provide busing and whatnot because um, all that adds up. Is that the last of it then? So in September is the due date for all ESSER and COVID monies and it'll be completely gone. Yeah. But we're doing some exciting things. Um, Friday we're going to go to Butte and take a nice long field trip and go to the World Museum of Mining uh, and go down in the Orphan Girl Mine. Um, for that, and we're going to go to Montana Tech uh, to the Brock and Mineral Museum there. Uh, and then in August, we have author Steve Collard coming out in our Things Are in Nature. We're going to take a field trip then and do some bird watching, uh, do lots of uh, reading activities around nature and animals and whatnot. So lots of fun stuff. Yeah, we've done 
done the orphan line. You got to check it out. It's awesome. I would like to. I've looked at some of that. I would think she goes quite a ways underground. Yes, I think that sounds really cool. Um, so that's what I've got. Um, facilities. Um, we've had um, our landscaping company coming out. go back. It just started pouring on us. That's what I've got for reports. Any questions? Audience <laughs> hey, maybe more people will join. We'll see. <laughs> General purpose. Anything from the public. <laughs> additions and acceptance. Uh, we do have additions. Um, so I would like to add to the agenda a multi uh, district agreement uh, with Lobos School District. I met with Superintendent Bollinger. Um, so I'd like to talk to the district about the possibility of this agreement. Like to have that to the agenda. Oh, district agreement for funds. I'll get more into it. And I have copies for you all when we oh, talk about it. Anything else there? Is he, there was something that? else. Yeah. Hopefully we have another link thing. I just had it and it's my brain doesn't keep on this stuff for okay. very long. Um there was something else we were going to what was it? What are we talking about? Oh I actually about this as part of my report going back. Um, so, in, <laughs> so in my work with legal counsel, um, I had them going through our handbooks um, to make sure everything, um, like Title IX changing, there's different federal laws changing, we wanted to make sure everything was up to date. Well, through that process, they went through our, all of our policies and they found out that there's a lot of out-of-date policies that need updated. Um, so, okay, our lawyer has recommended that she do a complete overhaul of our policy um, manual. Um, I'm still working on it. Are you changing it on you? <laughs> she did it 10 years ago, so I guess we're probably due. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering that, how that book stays current that I've been reading through. Well, it stays current. Usually we get updates and we add those just like we did this year. Uh, but it looks like in the past there's been several things missed or not revised, uh, and that could be going back a decade or so. Um, so she's um, highly recommended, uh, and I would recommend because our lawyer recommended <laughs> that uh, we have her completely go through it and um, recommend any revisions or policies that we could be missing. So we will get we'll get updated policies.
still working on that. Um, hopefully by the next meeting, um, we'll have a recommendation for how to get more done. And if anyone knows anyone, um, tell them to get in touch with one of us. So work by you down at this point, though. <laughs> well, we made that decision just to make it clean with May being the end date. Right. And um, I'm just kind of doing the cleaning after the summer, so there's not that much. You know, I think Even after they cook in there? Right. They want to cook in? <laughs> the kids are helping with the clean up. Okay. Oh, okay. Good, good. And actually, the kids are great every day, like at lunch and um, helping clean up their own messes and things. And like, pull the tables and now sweep. 24, 25 out your students. Uh, so I have an exhibit for you. And this exhibit has the grade level of the student uh, that they'll be going into, as well as I assign the student number to the student. Um, so as we make motions, instead of using student names, we can use the student number. So I'd like to update you on our numbers of where we're at um, because you passed a policy recently that outlines out of district enrollment for students um, and we've had some staffing changes since then. Um, so the cutoff is 75%. Um, so that's the level where we would say that we are full for out of district students. Um, and with not rehiring a fourth teacher, what that will mean is there will be times where the older grades are combined for like PE and whatnot. Um, so that actually will put that uh, classroom for like PE and whatnot at 19. Um, so that means that uh, second through eighth grade uh, is at the 75% mark. And we actually do not have Um, we have one four-year-old literacy program student on the uh, docket here, and that would be the 75% cutoff if you approve that student today. Um, so with ex acceptance of that student, we would be full after that child. And how many is that in that literacy? Uh, so that this would be the second child in the program, but in the classroom, it'd be which would be the 75% cutoff. Um, so my recommendation based upon our policy and Montana accreditation standards is that we would approve the student for the four-year-old literacy program, but that we are not able to approve the fourth and seventh grader uh, based upon um, our student numbers and our Also, we moving forward for the next meeting uh, that we truly are full. Uh, and you may want to make two separate motions for it. One to accept, one to do. I would make a motion to accept uh, student number five or four Y O A T. One quick, quick question. Are these new, um, app, okay, so previous students that you've already. That's, already done. Yeah. that's it. Yeah. So, so everyone who applied that's currently here that turned in an application gotcha. has been accepted. That's yeah, that was, yep. that was, that was like good, good question. Last meeting we did <laughs> yeah. that one. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. New business, 24-25 election contract. 
those last two pages in your packet there, it's the one we do every year. It pretty much says that if we happen to have an election during the 24-25 school year, we want Missoula County elections to take care of it. <laughs> so we don't do it here. Right, it'll be just like we always do. They'll take care of the mail ballots, they will put the ads in the paper, they will do all the everything, and then send us a bill afterwards, which the bill's very inexpensive. It's probably ours is so tiny that it doesn't cost a whole lot to run an election for us. Um, but yeah, it means they'll just take care of everything. So the opposite of doing that, because I've done that, it's just the, horrible. the district would hire <laughs> The election judges, they would hire an election administrator. All that would be on the district, and the counting would be on us because I've helped participate in that, and it's a lot. Of Ten years at Big Fork, <laughs> three bond elections. It was oh, all yeah. of things. <laughs> we used to have the elections up here at school, and and they still could choose to use this as an election site, the county, but now almost everything is mail. We'll make a motion to uh, accept the 2024-25 election contract. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Possible future facility projects. So I've been working on compiling some numbers for things and also going through the facility looking at everything that has been updated that haven't been updated. Uh, we recently approved two big projects, uh, one for the blinds and one for new HVAC systems in this building. So two big things for the summer have already been approved. Um, but I want to give you an idea of things that still need to be done at some point, and maybe um, the board would like to tackle something else this summer. Or maybe we want to wait uh, until the next summer just want to kind of give you an idea of what's going on uh, in addition to kind of going back to that tour um, some of that stuff kind of goes along with that uh, you want to talk about the tour sir? yeah so we end up between the voted levy that we still have for two more years and our permits of levy that we're allowed to levy every year um, our total building reserve I don't have final numbers, but it always comes in right around $38,000. So starting July 1st, we'll have another $38,000 to spend. We have spent out for this year. Um, we had to put the down payment on the blinds, and then we had to, um, they've already got, I think, most of the equipment in for the furnace replacement. Um, so that kind of uh, killed it for the year. Um, so that $38,000, um, probably about eight of that will cover the rest of the blinds and the remaining bit of the furnace, which leaves us about $30,000 for next year um, to consider for other projects. What I'm going to do is go building by building um, and highlight things that still need to be done. Uh, for building one, so the old building um, has not had a new roof recently. These two buildings have summer um, so that's something to keep in the back of your mind we'll probably want to do that before the building reserve um, levy runs out um, so what how did they run they ran it was anywhere between 20 and 26 thousand i know going back far enough when we did the first building it was a few thousand dollars less the last building i think was right around 26 if i'm remembering right um so i would i would guess this is much smaller. I think building one is smaller. It is smaller, um, um, but prices have also gone up. Yeah. So I'm estimating probably 25 grand on the high end would be my guess. And that's just total guess. I don't have a quote on that. That's not something I recommend for this summer. Um, I'd say the next summer or the summer. Um, the other thing that needs to happen in building one is there's three really old windows that will need to be replaced at some point. Um, they replace most of the windows, all the bigger ones, but there's three small ones that will need to be replaced. Um, I did 
did get one quote, and if we were to move forward, I'd get a few more quotes before deciding. Uh, but that's looking at about four thousand the first quote. Those are crazy. Everything's crazy. Um, <laughs> the other thing would be uh, the basement. Just to note, and this isn't necessarily a major thing, but I did find out it leaks. Um, so at some point. We'll Moving on to building to this building. Um, so one of the things that needs to done at, be done at some point is the front porch out there. Uh, the concrete needs to be repaired or replaced. And the beams also have issues uh, where they attach to the cement. Um, so some major work needs to be done on that. Um, the exterior doors, all four of them, continue to have major issues even though I've had worked on. Um, they are just um, at the end of their life, um, not only on the hardware, but on the door itself. Uh, today, I have seen that the leather stripping, even though I had that installed, you can see the outside again. Um, the doors just underneath them have completely worn down. Um, and I've had a hard time getting a contractor that's willing to do like industrial doors. Um, a lot of people have just said no. They're like, oh, well, we'll do like a home door program, but we're not going to do an industrial door. Um, so I finally called uh, Jackson Contracting Group uh, because they are one of the main uh, firms that builds new schools. And I mostly wanted to see, hey, who do you know that does school doors and industrial doors like that? Um, and they said, oh, well, we would do that. So they actually came out and gave me a and to fix the doors and to replace the five doors, four here and one in building three is completely pressing out, um, and reconnect them to the security system, uh, which was expensive. It's $27,000. Yeah. A lot of money. So, all right, then we need another bid. How to get back into yeah. the doors, apparently. Yeah. Um, but to keep on your radar, it's something we're going to have to get done at some point. Have you called uh, uh, what, BMC in Missoula? They do doors, I thought. And, uh, and uh, um, Garden City Glass, we've done some of those. They do you know if they do industrial? Yeah, they, well, they do the post office. You should have so fancy about them. They're just steel. Because the security system has to subcontract and come back out and install things, so that's three to five thousand dollars right there. Just for hooking up the security system. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. Kids are so expensive. <laughs> um, but just to you keep it. You for five doors. I mean, it's, it's really. So I'll keep working on more bids, make some more calls. Which out. one you want first, the door or the roof? <laughs> the door. <laughs> yeah. I play with that door out there every day. And it's just so difficult though. There's got to be some local contractors that would deal with new industrial doors. It's a stick building. Yeah. It's not brick and mortar, it's stick. Like every other door, it's yeah, just yeah. yeah. Yeah, moving on. One of the things I've noticed in the kitchen in this building is the linoleum is bubbling up, so that's something that will either need repaired or replaced at some point. Um, the other thing we've talked about this before, and we talked on the tour, is getting a full remodel on these two bathrooms in here. I did a quickie patch and the girls went in there on the ceiling because it was crumbling, um, things like that. Um, so they could really use a full remodel. So I did get one quote on that to kind of have an idea. Um, so that was $10,000 I came in for both bathrooms. For both, 
was pretty yeah. good. I thought that was pretty good, yeah, with the sinks, um, the uh, flooring, the painting, the shit I think we could live through that on a laundry room. <laughs> yeah. So I thought that was a pretty good uh, quote, um, but that's something that could really be used put a small heater in the office. It currently has no heat except for residual. Um, and we could put a cadet heater similar to what we put into the library into that uh, from an electrician for probably about a thousand bucks. Um, so that's something that we want to get done at some point. Is it a cadet? What is a cadet? A baseboard? No, so the really tiny ones. Like a box. Just stuck in the wall. I can show you afterwards. Okay. For a hundred bucks, we can go to Ace and get one plug in. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, the fire marshal. I was going to say, don't yeah. let the fire marshal <laughs> see it. <laughs> and we get inspected every year. Um, uh, one thing also to think about in those bathrooms, they're not too bad, but the lighting um, in so the fans is it's horrible. Yeah. I mean, you can barely you see, see it. Until it's on. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that's something, uh, like if we had the electrician put a heater in, it'd be great to put a nice bright like LED light in those bathrooms so you can actually see as you're using the restroom. Oh, sorry. Um, also the door, uh, there's one door out of the, the five. Um, outside, uh, one thing I'd like to do is get some more stone for the, um, the, um, no, for the, um, the flower beds, the, the river stone. Um, and one of the recommendations from DNRC was to put stone around building three that side there. There's no, it's grass only in that one spot. And they said, really, we need to do like we did everywhere else and have stone around it, not have the grass that we've been missing. Um, so that's just a small area. Um, I could probably do a couple of farms in my bank out front if we want to get that out and maybe use it as a couple of those. Um, and then the um, parking lot and the um, driveway and everything, Jace uh, graded that. Back over the parking lot with his um, overallers <laughs> and whatnot, and um, smoothed it even more. Um, so it's looking a lot better. Um, one thing that Joe mentioned to me while he was doing that was that he'd be willing to come in and do a sidewalk along the parking lot. Um, he has the forms for that for sidewalks apparently, and all we would have to do is pay for the cement. Um, yeah, we just have to figure out how long it's going to be and tell Joe to get a price on the concrete. Yeah. So if we wanted to so move instead forward, of doing like the boulders or something, do a curved sidewalk. don't work as it is now. <laughs> so the curb would be the round thing to where the kids drive, they'd have to drive up over the yeah, top of I'm that sure. to get a kid. It wouldn't probably be round. It'd still probably just be scared. Yep. <laughs> so hopefully everybody can drive safe. Okay. All right. And you give kids more room to yeah. walk. I mean, because there's days you pull up and like you'll start the line and pretty soon you notice the line's angled forward and the last car is touching the hill. Right. Um, 
So if you'd like me to have him price out the concrete, I'm sure Jay's or I could talk to him and then bring it back to you. But, um, sounded like a pretty good deal. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's better to do it with like boulders or something. I mean, I'd be willing to donate the boulders. I've got plenty of that. <laughs> on something you'd really like to accomplish this summer or ponder things on? How's about you get that list and put it in the order you want it? You want your windows? I think knocking the bathrooms out would be for $10,000. Yeah, like, you can do like the bathrooms and maybe the windows. Or... But it's only, what, 8000 8, left for the windows? Is that right? No, 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 no. no it's 30. A, or, We've got we would 30, have 30 grand total, total. So, gotcha. depending on what you decide to. So, if we did the $10,000 bathrooms, then we'd have 20 to do something else. Right. Whether it be the few windows or. Yeah, it's also if you need to get a bid on those doors to a couple more bids. Yeah. If those yeah. are necessary, it sounds like those are kind of high priority, too. Well, if we do the bathrooms, we ain't doing the doors. If we do the doors, we don't get to do Unless anything else. Unless somebody comes in with us in 20 yeah. Yeah. doors or nothing. <laughs> so my, here's my thought, is the bathrooms, I feel like the 10,000 is very doable for this summer. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then I continue to try to find a contractor for next summer to replace all the doors, hopefully cheaper. And then the summer after that, we can do probably the doors for that. I'll have to have somebody do some minor repairs. So you're thinking, do the bathrooms, the windows. I think i uh, wait on the windows too. I think the electrical of our buildings too would be do the, building three, I mean. If you did the went the the bathrooms, the heater, yeah. and the lights. Yeah. 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 And that's a start. Yeah. Yeah. I mean I don't know how good how much you want a heater in the summer, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get a discount because it is summer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if somebody wants to make a motion for the bathrooms, yeah. do we even have a bid for the heater? Um, <coughs> I did have an electric company, and I think it was uh, it was about a grand. This was quite some time ago when they were working on the heaters. Maybe we could get Bill into coming back up. And there you go. I think he was the one that had the quote from. <laughs> oh. So. Make a motion to do the bathrooms, the lights, and the heater in that office. I'll second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Past upcoming events. We have one more thing. Oh. Multi district. Oh. See, it's not it's not in the, the lineup here. Yeah. You said there wasn't much and it was going to be quick. <laughs> I got chatty about facilities. <laughs> Sorry. So multi-district agreement. This is an agreement with another entity to go into partnership with um, having basically a bank. Um, so one of the things um, that happens is in a general fund, that money has to be spent by the end of the year. You use it or you lose it. Um, some different funds, that isn't the case. The general fund and some of the other funds, it's the, that is the case. Um, we don't usually end up having a huge amount left at the end of the year. We're a smaller district. Um, you know, it might be a matter of thousands, let's Oh gosh, it's been a few years. We've had to dip in reserves for a couple times over the last four or five. Yeah, th it's usually not, definitely less than 10,000. I mean, it's closer to just a couple, two or 3,000. And that's from the general fund? That's the general fund. Um, like, if we have anything left this year, it's going into reserves. For the most part, <laughs> it's going to go into it's pushing us for upcoming years. Um, but yeah, but if you, there are some schools that have tens of thousands of dollars yeah. left at the end of the year. 
and when I was at Knox, and we were elementary and high school districts similar to MCPS, but we had a multi-district agreement between our two separate school districts, and uh, we had built up over $100,000 in uh, the multi-district uh, fund by saving those year-end money. Um, but Lolo reached out to us, I met with Superintendent Olinger, and they would like to partner with us have a multi-district agreement to be able to put any monies that either district may want to put into this, it kind of works like a savings account. Um, the money we put in would be ours and we could take out. The money they put in would be theirs and they could take out and then um, they, they would divide um, the interest uh, between us. Um, it opens possibilities don't even have to put in money. We could put just a little bit in to have it there, um, but it opens options and it also um, helps another district next to us. Um, it's great to build partnerships. Um, there's really no downside. How does it help? Um, being able to save that money if we did have. Getting more money. interest? Um, and just being able to put that general fund money away. So like Lolo right now, they get the end of the year. You can only put a certain percentage into reserves. And once you hit that maximum, if you have any left over, it essentially goes back to the state. What this does is gives you another option as to where to put that extra money Protection. that you can oh, use for later. Oh, okay. And so it's a it's a legitimate way to not have to send it back. <laughs> um, but then it's there and you have it for future years. Um, they have agreed to front all costs for the paperwork for filing it. Uh, they've also agreed to be the custodian and have their clerk do the paperwork and keep track of it. Um, so really there's no cost to us. Um, we're just entering into the partnership and if we choose to put some money in the general fund into there, if we have enough, um, we have that option. And then it, renew it can renew every three years or as long as you choose not to. Um, so my recommendation would be to enter into a multi-district agreement with all of you. I can't, well, at the moment, I've not seen any reason not to. That's basically for tax when the state yeah. pays back? Yeah. I think it's, yeah. it's just a big middle finger to the state. <laughs> Which I said, make a motion. <laughs> Make a motion to approve the multi district agreement with Lowe's along with the school. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Maybe one of these years the legislature will give us a ton of money and we'll have money to put in. That's right. Motion carries. <laughs> well, Past upcoming events. When we're behind in. Yeah. It sounds so like if, we're, if we were. I'm just sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so when we did get the levy that was passed, can you use that for our budget? If we had money in there, you could. If you, there, yeah, you could. say we had 40 grand in there, yeah. we could hire a teacher. Yeah, that's what I was <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, It's like a savings account. Yeah. Okay. yeah, and there's no limits. It's not like title money where you have to use it for particular things. It can be cool. Great. Yeah. Anybody have any issues with July 1st? Maybe. It's the first Monday of July. Are you going to have bills or we're going to have to do a special meeting to get bills? Well, July is kind of different because it's just kind of wrapping up June and there's not a whole lot going on. So July 1st is fine. And I'm gone on the 8th. So. Okay. Vacation <laughs> um, time, huh? <laughs> and I've set a contractor to work up on the 1st, assuming we'd be here. They're going to put the blinds in that day. First work for me. First for me. Just checking before I announce it. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Will you do me a favor and just pull out your phone and put it in your calendar and <laughs> set a reminder? <laughs> <laughs> Next meeting, July 1st, 5 o'clock. This meeting is adjourned at 5.45. 5 .45.